Hey guys, welcome back to the Windsor Academy. I'm James, a leader, one of the leaders and founders of the Bad Omen Gaming Community Guild, the gaming, gaming guild community thingy, here on European Ragnarok Online, together with my wife Solemnus. Hi. Um, so, this episode is going to be about the Geffen Magic Tournament with my GX, well, one of my GXs, she's 169. Uh, these are her stats at the moment. I do hope it's not too blurry. Um, she has high strength, some agility. She's a rolling cutter spec, basically. Now, I know my gear is a little bit out of range for a lot of people, but I assure you this can be done even with a lot lesser gear. It will just take a little bit longer. Um, now, let's just dive right into it. Now, Geffenmatic Tournament is split up into a plethora of different... Um, mobs, sorry, where you basically, you face off against, I believe it's 12 or 13 different rounds. Each round will be different than the last. So you're gonna need a lot of different gear, usually. Now, weapon-wise, you can't go wrong with an abysmal card. However, you really, really need to have a golem carded weapon to make your weapon indestructible. Because there is a boss in there that will break your weapon. And, well, a GX without a weapon doesn't really do much damage. So, um, a golem carded weapon or some form of indestructible weapon will do just fine. Uh, make sure you have some sort of converter with you to change element. Because certain mobs in, in there are um, will only take 50% from neutral. I believe it's the last boss. So you'd want to have a converter to deal full damage. Uh, in terms of armor and, and the rest of your gear, I'm rolling a bravery bag of power with Wak Wak. You can go with Raedric. Do not, under any circumstances, use a Deviling. Because most things in there will cast spells and, well, it's going to hurt a lot. Ideally, I would say bring a fire armor and bring a um, holy armor and a, like, I don't know, unfrozen, basically. Um... Having said that, in terms of shadows, I'm just using some basic physical shadows, nothing super extreme. Um, let's see what else is there. Well, I guess that's pretty much it. Some buff. Oh yeah, right, fuck, I forgot to mention. You need a lot of hit. Okay, so I'm bringing some hit food. Uh, where the hell did I put that? There we go. 10 plus hit. 510, it's still not gonna be tons, but it's better than nothing. And together with the luck food, we should have... 517 or so now let's just go right into it now even if you're low level um, you can still do this but you can only do the first couple of bosses so in order to get there let's go through the Eden because it's in the time dimensional time warp crack thing right here we go so while we're walking if you like what we're doing please don't hesitate to hit that follow button or even the subscribe button It'll really help us out and we appreciate it. Now you talk to the cat, let's do this. So anyway, um, to enter Geffen Magic Tournament, which I should know, uh, hang on. I believe it's level 90, right. So it's level 90 to enter, which you can do. Um, the thing is, the higher you get, the harder the opponents are and Obviously, the more coins you get. You get the currency in there called Geffen Magic Contest Coin something. Geffen Magic Contest Coin. That doesn't make any sense at all, but yeah, basically that. Now, let's just find the... Uh, where's my mount? Here we go. Right, okay, so... In order to find this thingy first, we need to actually go there. In order to get there, we have to find a guy called Emmett White. So, we just entered here, right? In From here. So, let's see if we can find Emmett White somewhere. No. It should look like a professor dude thing. No, that's an adventurer and that's an, a creator. Anyway, so we walk around here aimlessly for a bit, pretending we know what we're doing. Is this him? It is! And that's... I have no idea what that is. Right, so we talk to Emmett White. See, professor or, you know, high upper class douchebag. Uh, let's see here. Yes, we would like to enter. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, positioning Q2. Right, okay, that gives us some time to prepare stuff. Now, there are a couple of reasons why you should be doing this. The last boss can drop a card, as far as I know, which is really, really, really good and valuable. 
Um, secondly, and more importantly, you can trade these coins in for gear. Now, they're both magic gear and physical gear. The rings are actually really, really good. There's a physical and Honza ring, which will give you 5% damage, like attack damage. And if you combine it with an um, anti-magic suit, you get 5% attack speed. Or with the magic robe, you get less delay usage and demi-human damage received. Less demi-human damage received. Anyway, uh, there's the, also the equivalent for casters. And yes, I'm reading a guide right now on this because... Well, it's just, it's impossible to memorize all of this. Usually I just go in and slaughter everything and, you know, shit's good. Um, all mobs in there are, let's see here, demi-human. Demi and they have neutral, ghost, or earth element. So, yeah. You need to have, like, a fire converter or something. So, okay, so you can enter, so let's just do that. Enter the crack of space. I love these translations. They're the reason I get out of bed in the morning. Um, shit, do I have token of Siegfried with me? In case things go bad, yes I do. Okay, so we enter what appears to be Giffen. And there's some broadcastings with some horrible translations going on. Um, regular Giffen music, pretty chill out. We can sit down, have a little... Apparently we get stuck. Giffen resident, help, somebody, he stole my paycheck. Um, okay, apparently this is Giffen shoplifter. Right. I gotta help. Uh, not really, but okay. Alright, let's just see how we... Yeah, alright. Give my Cine back to me. Don't move. Um, what? Th this is not the instance. This is some stuff in before. What? I have you now, and then it runs off. Right, okay, I have no idea what that was about. Some little tiny cutscene. Anyway, let's just actually go to the instance. Right, uh, so yeah, this is where we have to go. This is at the bottom. When you enter, you just go straight down. If you know what Giffen looks like, this is where you open Giffenia. Um, obviously, this is an instance version of Giffen. It looks like this. There's tons of NPCs around. There's some Kafra. There's some... What, what's with this bunny band, though? Like a pre-renewal bunny band. That was the shit back then, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm sorry about this. We have the War of Penis Measure... Sorry, War of Imperium going on here, so let's just get, do the instance, Kafra employee, here you can say you can use storage, push cart, and so on. Now, having said that, let's find the receptionist, wherever they are, ah, it's this one, right. So you talk to the tournament receptionist, and there's some info, and how do I register? Right, so you do a little thingy, the test, blah blah blah, and then you have to be able to kill this wolf. Easy peasy. Now we've apparently qualified. Doesn't seem like there's much things to qualify for, but okay. So you talk to him. Congratulations, you passed the test. Give me your name. Mm, I'm not sure. Okay, fine. Laura Windsor. Uh-huh. Thank you. Right. So he wishes us good luck, and then we proceed to go south. Now there should be a portal here that's terribly placed. I mean, I'm not even sure who the hell put this portal here. They could just put it in there for... Anyway, you enter here and then thingy will start, so we make sure we have all our gear on. Now, the first couple of rounds you can do, it doesn't really matter if you're good geared or whatever. So this is what it looks like. Tons of people watching us. Academy Master. MC of Group A, really. MC, okay. So, but what's gonna happen is that they will spawn your like um, competition basically will spawn on the right side. Guess it will be okay. Yeah, and there's some effects. So don't worry, they don't do damage to you. It's just basically effects to look cool. So this guy, I mean, he's like the warm up. So you can just he he doesn't really do much. He only has like a hundred k health. And uh, he's like an introduction. You get one coin for defeating him. Now, if you want to do this properly, this guy, he does fire spells if you don't kill him instantly. So, a fire armor for the first round. Once you kill him, or one, you do start the second match and get reward. As you can see, this is a mage. 
surprise, surprise, this one also casts spells. Now, Dio Anemus, whatever his name is, yeah. Now, he does Frost Diver and Thunderstorm, which means that an Unfrozen might not be a good, bad idea. So let's just do Unfrozen. For some reason, he's using his staff to attack us. Um, so, we take him down. Unfrozen is a good idea. Let's just switch over to something else. Right. The next one can be three different ones, depending on which one we get. There's the shoplifter, there's a bully, and there's a gang member. Apparently Geffen has gangs. Um, who would have thought, right? Okay, so we get the shoplifter. This is the little one that was stealing Senny from the person before, yeah? Um, Damage-wise, you can do neutral damage, that's fine. And this person does stone curse on you, so we want to use a deadly to be immune to stone curse. Again, I will probably just wreck her instantly, but if you don't, then you should be able to, you know... But yeah, against the shoplifter you want to be wearing an undead armor because she stone curses and uses envenom. My p battle power has decreased. Well, it could be because you're a thief wearing a bunny band. So, and then you talk with the tournament thingy. Start forge match and get reward. <laughs> now this one's called Feymont. 100% from everything. And she only casts increased agility in combat, which means you might have to crit her to death if you're not fast enough. Now... Her health pool is like 400k, so it's not really that... Let's see, does she do a up now? Ah, you can still hit her though, she's weak. Right, okay. Um, yeah, she does a up, so you might want to crit her, I guess, or have really high... F she has yeah, she has some flea. Uh huh. Okay. I know what I forgot. Actually, no, I didn't. I forgot to tell you that. You should bring a silversmith bracelet. I'm actually just gonna quit mine for now. Uh, because basically, the last match and a few ones before that. Let's see, Ordre. Now, she takes 100% from everything. And she does cold skills. So, swap to an aqua armor for the wizard. And, well, that's pretty much it. You can do it unfrozen as well, I guess, but I, I would probably say... Why do they attack with the staves, though? Yeah, see, as you can see, she does the thingy. You can spell break that if you want, I guess. Or you can just move out of it. But the yeah, aqua armor, definitely for the wizard. That, that is what I would do. Defeated. Yeah, no wonder. What? What? Right, okay, so now there's the Paladin. Blathasa. What a fucking name is that? Now this one only takes 50% from neutral, so you want to use a converter here. It doesn't really matter which one. Um, so we're just going to go with fire, and the skills she casts are holy. So if you have a holy armor, you could use that, otherwise you just move out of it. So let's just use a converter. Uh, deadly poison. Yeah, see, she does Grand Cross. Pup, 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 pup. I can't name his blood haze, it sounds like a stoner. What do you mean you will not lose? You just did. Um Right, I uh, uh, okay. Anyway, moving on. Next one is Kuro Akuma. This is a Kagero if I'm not mistaken. Uh full damage from everything, skills, bleeding. No real elements to speak of to be honest. Nothing that matters anyway. It does appear to do a couple of things, but... But yeah, obviously you can do all of this without any problem, even without the gear that I'm using. Yes, you lost. Okay, let's see. Eighth match is... what? Oh, it's a, it's a rune knight. Okay, so the rune knight is called Ifodes. Ifodes. Takes 100% from everything, and skill-wise... Magnum break. Okay, so we want to switch back into fire armor here, I guess. Yeah. And you also just clashing spiral endure and some skill. I have no idea what that is. So let's just. He does appear to have quite a bit of health. Well, I mean in comparison, anyway, to the other. So there, kill him. The next one is an Archbishop. 
Lishinaeus. 100% from everything. She casts heal, holy attack, and Phenuma. So, again, a holy armor if you want. Otherwise, it shouldn't be much of a problem. If you range, she casts Numa on herself, so you might want to move, move her out of that. Um, but for some reason, they have this thing about attacking you with their me melee weapons, and they wonder why they lose. Yeah, you see, she does holy attacks on me. So, we're just gonna kill her. Here we go. But yeah, holy armor is a good idea here. If you're uh, granted, when I'm telling you the armors, I'm basically assuming that you're not overgeared and can just burn them down. So I'm just trying to cater to people who might not be super geared. I'm trying to get into something. Okay, so this is the ninth one. Now remember, it doesn't matter if you can't finish it. I mean, okay, it matters, but it's still worth it doing because you get coins for each one you. Okay, so this is a dancer or wanderer. She uses double strafe, mental breaker, ankle snare. She takes 100% from everything. Okay, so no element to speak of. Watch out for her traps though. Apparently wanderers can now trap. But it's, again, for me it's not really a problem, but I can see how this could hurt people. She does need quite a bit of hit. But it shouldn't be much of a problem. So, you do like this, and then we'll just burn her down. There we go. Did I actually kill her? Oh, no, no, there we go. It's weeping. Well. So, right. Next one. Jew. Jew is... What is Jew? Oh, it's it's a sorcerer. Right, okay. So, he takes 100% from everything, and skill-wise, he casts everything. Um, all the different bolts, and fiber lock, and he can strip your shield. So, basically, you're better off just wearing any element. Or a holy. Holy would actually be the best, I guess, to reduce all damage. Unless you have GTB, but it does strip your... As you can see, he's casting a lot of skills on me. If you're GX, you can probably output it. He does have quite a bit of health, as you can see. Um, so we're just gonna stand here and spin for a little bit. Doesn't really... He can't divest our shield because we don't have any. And yeah, it does hurt a little bit, but you know, so much Stella and you know, we're, we're okay. Eventually, whenever he decides to give up. There we go, and he's down. Um, like I said, for everyone else, if you don't have super good gear, Holy Armor is a great choice, it reduces all medic damage taken. And that's honestly the only thing I can think of that would help you against all of this. Because he uses basically Fire, Cold, Lightning and Earth Bolts. So, anyways, the next one is Dwy? Well, no, was that the one I just did? No, it wasn't. Um, okay, this is Faye. Now, Faye has minions. And she also, this is where you need your unbreakable weapon, okay? Because this one, she does a fire on the ground, which means you need fire armor, right? I'm also gonna put on Ring of the Flame Lords here. Um, in terms of her damage taken, you also need a converter here because she only takes 50% from neutral. So we need to have like fire, water, earth, holy, whatever. Anything but poison, really. She takes 150% from ghost, which is pretty good. Um, now she also has a golem with her. You see the fire here? That she puts on the ground do not stand in that it stacks up so basically the longer you stand in it the more damage you take it's not a linear thing it's it's not and when you kill her ads she spawns new ones alphonse jr so i'm gonna be using hallucination walk here and we could even use a weapon blood this is actually oh god the first one will actually have to pay attention. Um, so basically, as you can see, you also have only a certain amount of time to kill her, so you might not want to slack. She does have quite a bit of health. Just move out of her fire. If you stand in the fire and your weapon is not unbreakable... Oh shit, she breaks the armor, not weapon, my bad. I could have sworn she broke the weapon. Maybe she does both. Well, anyway, so apparently you need an unbreakable fire armor as well. So like a Persona Valk armor, I guess. As you can see, the damage I'm taking is quite large. Um, but yeah, I'm 
fairly certain that she breaks both weapon and armor because last time I was here I did not have um, an unbreakable weapon and I had to cut my thingy short. Now she's saying we only have 1 minute 50 seconds left which is fine because well you know we're and I'm standing in the fire like a nub. Here we go. She's probably gonna use fire one more time before she's done. No? Okay. There we go. So she's down. So basically move out of the fire and have unbreakable shit on you. Um, and make sure you use a converter for... She's ghost, so she would take 150% from ghost. I'm not sure who can use converters for ghost, but if you're a genetic, you can use soul balls. Now, last match. This is Fenrir. Now, Fenrir... Again, you need a converter, and this is when... Uh, you can switch back to your other like, weapon again. doesn't have to be unbreakable. This is when the silversmith bracelet comes in hand. Now, he does do Earth Strain and Tetra Vortex, but you can just dodge it. So, I'm just going to be wearing my unfrozen armor because, well, why not, I guess. Make sure you have Spell Break on the bar, so when he starts casting Tetra Vortex, you just interrupt it. And he has 20, 20 million health, or she. It might actually be a she. It looks like a she. I assume that's a she. It will be decided by the judge's start. Oh, I'm not ready. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> okay. So we're just gonna buff up. Use the Jubilee. See, as you can see, she's casting Tetra Vortex, and we can interrupt it, and then she takes some damage. I think it's like 400k or something. Was it 40k? I don't know. The point is, when she casts Tetra Vortex, be somewhere else, or that happens. It's painful. Now, ideally, I should have interrupted this. Mm -hmm. As you can see, she has quite a bit of health. Yeah. So let's just see if we can drop this again. We can. Ideally, as soon as she does a long cast, you should drop it. Now you can use backslide. Um, four minutes left. Oh shit, she's casting. My bad. Oh god. Try to out mastella it if you can, or out pot it, or you know, something like that. But if you have some way to reduce magic damage taken, that would be a very, very good time to use it. Okay, she's casting again. Oh, that was... Sometimes you get really lucky with these spell breaks. I, I've tried everything, like luck, dex, uh, base level, and it doesn't really seem to matter. Now, the earth strain always goes down from her. So, never have her at the very top. And there's the Tetra Vortex again. I basically start spamming my Stella as soon as it starts going off. Because this way, I can try to negate some of the ticks. And you can even use like an Oog Seed or an Oog Barry or... You know, it beats dying, right? Oh shit. Oh god. Like that, because I backslide into the wrong direction. That is a good example of what to not do. So yeah, that meteor is... I believe it's Comet or Crimson Rock. I'm not sure which one. I think it might be Comet. Can I get it? I cannot. So you can just like run out of the circle or backslide out of it or log out. Well, no, you can't log out. But. Um, so now she's down soon. I have died once. I'm just gonna put on Hallow Walk. As you can see, her earth strain goes south from where she is at all times, which basically means if you're positioned on the north side of her, you should not have any problems with the earth strain at least. The Teta Vortex hits like a truck on fire, and the Comet, as you saw, is no different. So, be somewhere else, or interrupt it, or whatever. Like, you know, spell break that shit. Oh, come on. Oh god! 
Oh my god, I got hit, but I had hallucination walk up, which negated the damage. Thank god. Otherwise, I mean, it would have just been one more token, but as you can see, I was standing on the south side, but I had hallo walk up, so I would have taken damage from the earth straight, and she dro Oh my god! Is that the... Oh, okay, it's not the real one. <laughs> I thought it was the one, um... Yeah, it lasts for five minutes. Temporary in those... What's your drop chance of this, anyway? Fenrir card... Is that... 0.01%? No, that can't be right. Is that really the this one? No... Is it? <laughs> no, this can't be right. Because there is another one... Last for five minutes. Hmm. So, anyways, we got. Uh, here we go. We got 90 contest. Contest? 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 Thingy coins from the tournament, right? Now. Sorry, I'm, I'm still just um, a little bit. I'm not sure if that actually was the card that is really good or not. I am not. A anyways. So, we got the coins. You get one. Like, you get for each battle you finish. And uh, these are all the contestants. So, uh, yeah. I, I hope this helped you. And I hope you had fun watching it. I had loads of fun making it. And I, I really need to check out what this card is. Where did it go? Oh, it's a consumable. That's strange. Maybe it's just like a usable item. I don't know. Anyway. So, have a great one, guys. And as always, you know, if you need us, you know where to find us. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. So, in the next guide, even. So, um, take care, and thanks for watching, so, bye!